Good morning, this is the uh, other Stephen. Um, thank you, Benoit and uh, Stephen, for the, uh, and all of you for joining the, uh, the second round table of the working group on the Euro risk free rates. And I will speak about two things. First of all, how far are we in a transition? And secondly, about the challenges we face. But before I do that, I would like to thank the ECB, ESMA, FSMA, and the European Commission for their continued support and very hard work over the past years, uh, or actually a year and a half, uh, but also to the working group and the subgroup members for the determination to make this transition into a success. The working group mandate has been there and is there to identify and recommend risk-free rates that could serve as an alternative for the current benchmark used in financial instruments and contracts in the Eurozone. And the next step is to facilitate a smooth transition to these recommended new rates. And while the support, and I've said this before and I will say this again because it is important to mention, because the support of the sector observers of the working group is key, it remains the private sector of prime responsibility to deliver the mandate by complying with the EU benchmarks regulation and respecting the EOSCO principles for financial benchmarks. So it's upon us to get this done. Now, to the first topic, how far are we in the transition? And it consists of two parts. The first part is replacing Ionia by EURSDR. And I said in the past, I said Esther, but the ECB tells me I'm not allowed to say that, so it is EURSDR. On the 2nd of October 2019, the market will get acquainted with something new, and that is the Euro risk-free weight, the Euro SDR. And exactly one week from now, as Benoit mentioned, the ECB will start with the daily publication of that rate. Also on the 2nd of October, that is the start for the market to saying goodbye to Aeonia. Actually, something old, almost, I would say. And Aeonia was very long seen as a viable risk-free rate for the euro area. However, in its current form, with a lack of underlying transactions, the rate is not sufficient anymore to be compliant with the EU benchmark regulation. And therefore, the working group recommended Euro SCR as a replacement. In addition, the working group also recommended that Ionia's administra administrator, EMMI, recalibrates Ionia to Esther or Euro STR, here we go again, plus a fixed spread of eight and a half basis points once the publication starts on the 2nd of October of this year. And secondly, only publish that recalibrated Aeonia until the 3rd January of 2022. So the work is only to start as of the 2nd of October of this year. And EMI accepted or EMMI accepted these recommendations, and that means as of the 4th of January 2022, the market can only use the Euro risk-free rate, Euro SDR. And that means that we have a bit over two years to transition completely from Ionia to Euro SCR, and this will not only affect trillions of euros of Ionia-linked documents or contracts, but because they mature after the 3rd of January 2022, but it will also affect our processes and systems in which Ionia is widely used. And we need to work on that. Now, to work on a smooth or to support the transition from Ionia to Euro SDR within this relatively short time frame for the market as a whole, the working group focused its recommendations on five elements. And the first one was the transition path from Aeonia to Euro SCR, i.e. the recalibrated Aeonia plus the 8.5 basis points and the period 2019-2022, that was the first one. The second one are the legal measures for new and legacy contracts referencing Aeonia. The third one then are the practical measures for cash products and derivatives from the change in publication of the recalibrated Aeonia of, from T to T plus one from of the 2nd of October, and Benoit was referring to that, but also practical measures for these same products uh, between the 2nd of October and the 3rd of January 2022. And last but not least, but that still will need to be published, measures for risk management and financial accounting that will affect all of us. The second element of the transition and the progress that we've been making is on finding a fallback to Euribor. And with respect to Euribor, the working group welcomed the authorization of the, the new Euribor, if you will, or the Calibrate Euribor under the BMR in July 2019. 
and this will allow the market participants to continue using Euribor for the foreseeable future. However, and both Benoit and the other Stephen mentioned before, the BMR requires the introduction of robust fallbacks to Euribor in the contracts to avoid market disruption in the event that Euribor becomes unavailable. And therefore, the working group will continue to work to find a suitable Euribor fallback measure based on the recommended Euro risk free rate, Euro STR. In March of this year, the working group recommended a forward looking term structure methodology based on Euro STR ORS tradable quotes. And we invited potential administrators. Um, uh, to present their plans in the working group meeting on the 16th of October of this year. So we'll continue that discussion on the back of our recommendation. But in addition, the working group considered eight backward-looking terms or methodologies that were described by the FSB, uh, the Financial Stability Board, in their guide to overnight risk-free rate, and that guide was published in July of this year. The next steps on Euribor of the working group are to issue recommendations on the how. So we discussed the what, and now we discuss the how. And the first how is how to establish a liquid Euro SCR market that will facilitate the construction of term rate structures. How will the Euro SCR based forward looking and backward looking work together? How, how can they coexist? And then what is then the potential fallback to Euribor, at least in terms of the most suitable one for different financial products? The third one is the how, how to create a new credit spread methodology. And last but not least, but that's not a how, but a what, the legal measures, what legal measures for new and legacy contracts will then take place for Euribor, as well as the recommendations that we've now put in place for Eonia to Euro SDR. And here it's important that the working group also works together with ISDA uh, and similar initiatives in other jurisdictions to ensure alignment to the extent possible for the stability that also Bedouin was referring to. Now, this, this is all the good news, so I should actually stop here, but unfortunately, I'm forced to talk about challenges as well. I feel compelled to talk about challenges as well. Um, so what are the challenges that we currently face? Um, the key date, and I've said that before and I will say that again, is the 3rd of January 2022, by which time all the market participants need to have fully transitioned from Aeonia to Euro SDR. Um, and people call this putting a man on the moon, I will call this challenging, uh, but what that actually means, what we would have established by the 3rd of January of that year, is that we must have managed the complex legal and operational transition from Aeonia to Euro SCR, and secondly, we have to have created a liquid derivatives market based on Euro SCR to develop these term structures that can be used as a fallback to Euribor. Now, the working group trusts that the recommendations that we're currently making or have been making and will be making on the Ionia to, to Euro SCR transition and the, the Euribor fallbacks, that they give the market the tools to ensure a smooth transition. And to ensure this implementation thereof, uh, the communication and education of market participants is key, of which we're coming together today as well as an example. And therefore, we will continue to communicate with the market and reach out to stakeholders to make sure we communicate as widely as we can, but we also urge every one of you to do that as well. To close, I have spoken on the transition path and how far we are on the transition of Aeonia to Euro STR, as well as on the development of the fallbacks to Euribor. And secondly, I've spoken about the challenges we face and the urgent call that I do upon all of you to work on this transition yourself. Now, given this major transition underway and the impact on all market participants, we are working in a transparent way. And what that means is that on the ECB website, you will find the recommendations, the minutes, and the presentation of every working group meeting that you can read and discuss. The working group meeting is also, or the working group is also committed to consulting with the market participants, participants on the important decisions. So I'm grateful you're all here today to have a discussion and that you show interest in this major European reform. And that brings me to the handover, um, because there are other people who, are, who would like to come on stage, and we, we didn't want to divide it between Benoit, Stephen, and myself. So we also invite people who can tell you much more than we do. Um, um, so. Other groups will come on stage, and that starts with 
the, separ the several chairs of the sub-working groups, one on the cash and derivatives products, that's the first chair, then the, the second one is on contractual robustness, uh, what do we do with these legacy contracts and how do we have f uh, provisions in the, in the contracts, and the third chair is of the financial accounting and risk management working group or subgroup. And they will provide you with the recommendations that these subgroups and eventually the working group has made in a transition from Eonia to Euro SDR. Then we'll have a coffee break. Yes. And there will be a panel discussion after the coffee break on what you can do to establish a liquid Euro SDR market. And then last but not least, that is a third panel. Then we will wrap up with a discussion on the term rate initiatives. So we focus on Euribor. And then EMMI will give a status update on Euribor reform. The working group members will give an update on the forward and the backward looking methodologies and envisage fallbacks for Euribor. And then ISDA will present their work on Euribor or on IBOR fallbacks as well. I've said this previous year in the round table, but I, let me say this again because time is indeed of the essence. And we encourage all of you to spread the word on what you hear today to ensure a very smooth transition. Thank you very much.